We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. Fern, great to see you on this Saturday morning. Fern in the midnight oil. Work never stops. If you guys want to see a beautiful mine here, a little sneak peek there. Nope. Oh, can't see, can't see it anymore. You don't get to see it anymore. You don't get to see those goods. <laughs> Fern and I were just I'm working just on some new uh, material. Let's stand over here so they can't see yeah, it. Yeah, block that. For those watching on YouTube, you can maybe zoom in and catch a little piece. I feel like it, I should even erase it. Should I erase you may, it? You, you may want to. You got some keen right. eyes out there. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to turn my video off, everybody. Keep talking, Jim. I'll turn my video I'll, off. I'll, you guys can't. I'll, I'll yeah. chime in. Fern's going to erase it, rightfully <laughs> so. So, you know, Fern and I, it's a Saturday morning, and lest you think we just kind of chill out like we're entrepreneurs. And sometimes that means you wake up on a Saturday and you grind. We've got some lectures coming out for some awesome events. We'll be at some of the uh, round tables going on. There we, it is. We it's wiped, clear. we wiped to the Ram on the computer. No one will ever know <laughs> unless you're at the round tables, but you know, it was really cool Fern. Cause as we're working on this, you and I were realizing this is much the same way CrossFit started, right? Yeah. Coach Glassman at the time, probably talking to his classes, probably talking to people like Nicole Carroll, Dave Castro, and yeah. these amazing sentences come out, these amazing statements, which then down the road become integrated in the level one. They become bold as in, you know, 20 years later, we'll still, we're still saying these things. And man, this lecture that we're going to provide out there is going to be pretty awesome. And in the future, we're going to have a retreat not like we're not talking distant future. We'll probably announce that maybe Q4 of this year and quarter four. A, so that's the last three months of the year for you guys out, out there. They don't know. Yeah, what Q4 that, means. That, you know, I'm <laughs> under the assumption everyone's at our level of business and they're not right. Not everyone knows what Q4 is, but um, we're really excited about that. The retreat's going to be awesome. Yeah. So definitely keep your eyes peeled. If there's an affiliate roundtable coming to your area for the, they're only for box owners, they're typically limited in space. We're not at all of them, but if you get an email from your district rep, go because whether it's us or one of the other amazing lecturers out there, it's just a great day to be around the community. Great day to be around other box owners. And absolutely, you know, if, if you're lucky enough to be at one of the ones we'll be at, I mean, your mind is basically going to be blown. The, uh, there's so there was one in, in Texas last weekend. Uh, there is one in Ohio this weekend at Rogue and Florida uh, and Florida. And then there are a minimum of, I think, four to five more over the next month. Uh, I the um, so if you get the email, I think you should go. They're limited to affiliate owners only. So you have to be LOR and you and they're capped at 50 people. So, um, get in there, save your spot. Like Jay said, uh, this is something I wish I would have done way more of as a younger affiliate owner, which was just get out there and learn from new people. Like you're, you're going to meet some people that have an idea. It, it's basically a free mastermind, like kind of, yeah. sort of, right. Kind of like it's a free mastermind ish. Right. I don't, I don't know the full scale of the percenters. They're all different. Uh, but we, we will be at three for sure, maybe four or five. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. So for no other reasons that we just like hanging out with the owners and talking shop, like if you get to go, uh, it'd be awesome to meet you guys. So if you're there, we gotta, we're going to be Seattle, New York, Michigan. Is that right? I, you know, tentatively it's Michigan. It's the, okay. I don't even know what district that's considered, considered some are central, Central states, it's like. Can we talk about the very Hunger Games feeling of this district thing? Well, it's weird. Yeah, it's like their district numbers, etc. Which, if you were all going to fight, (laughs) what district in the United States would win? Let's let's call it fitness. Fitness. I, well, this used to be the 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 kind of thing about the the regionals, which is like the central. The central was the Ohio, Tennessee you know, the rich froning land, 
Um, so I don't even know. I, like, I don't even know what they're with the restructuring of that. However, we should do that. We should, we should start that up. There should be district like playoffs. Competitions. Yeah. Play- district I like playoffs. That. District playoffs. You know, TM, back in the trademark day, that. I want whatever, whatever revenue yeah. they get off the online sales for that. I want that. When, when there were regionals and I was the regional director for the Northeast, I would travel around and I remember being at rogue and the way it worked, this is probably 2011 or 12. If it was a returning uh, champ or someone that had made it the year prior, their spot was already locked in. So like they had an central, open invite, they had an right? Open the invite, central yeah. region, the year I went to see it sent like six people to the games because they had to go so deep because it was like Froning, Bailey, and maybe like right. I want to say like Graham Holmberg at the time all had guaranteed we're former spots. winners. Yeah, they're former yeah. winners, so they didn't was, count. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, cool. The uh, yeah, I, I wish I would have done that, and I would have I would have learned a lot of things sooner by having conversations with other people, and and, and then that's the point of the roundtables is is to get in there and see what other people are doing and see what ideas learn from their experiences and, and see what other people are doing. Um, because you wouldn't, you won't make mistakes um, or you'll feel more comfortable about things. Like I was on a phone call the other day and yeah, I don't know how many people, most people have probably experienced this, but, but so-and-so comes in and they're like, I'm really looking for punch cards or 12 time a, a week class, or, you know, I don't really think I need to do foundations, you know, and I get it, right? Because somebody was asking me, they're like, hey, do you get a lot of pushback on people going through foundations? And I said, I'm going to answer this. And I'm going to answer this two different ways. I'm going to answer me now. And I'm going to answer me, we'll call it four years ago. So me now? No. Me four years ago? Fuck yeah. Absolutely did. What and was the difference? So there's a lot of differences there. Number one, I really got clear on like what, like what it is that I was doing, right? Like what my offerings were, why, and we've talked about this before, but the, the reason most people get pushed off of, you know, or they allow people to move the salt shaker. Like we've used that analogy before they get pushed off of their structure is because they don't truly understand why it's not logically built within their, within their brain. They're just like, well, the gym down the street offers this. And they come in and like, well, the gym down the street is offering that. And so I guess I would really like to pay that price. And then the gym owner forfeits that. And they're like, all right, well, I mean, I guess if that's what they want to do, then that's, the, that's what they want to do. Or they come in, they're like, well, you know, I've been crossfitting in another affiliate for a long time. And then, I, and then you let them bypass your onboarding into your community. And, and we, I, was, I was walking um, the affiliate owner through this process. And I said, you are going to get some pushback because there is discrepancy in how people come in. And when there is discrepancy with how people come in, people get bent about it. So you have to, you, there is, a, there is a fleshing out period there where you have to have some, some tips and tricks in your back pocket to make sure that you hold true to what you're doing, whether it's a money back guarantee or something like that, that allows you to stay and do that. And I was telling him the reason that nobody, you know, uh, really pushes back on the onboarding is because the expectation is that everybody now does onboarding. So uh, we get a ton of referrals and it's not, and they're, they're, the, 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 the scenario in which you would have a problem here would be I come in and I don't do the onboarding and I refer Jay and then Jay knows I didn't do the onboarding, but then the affiliate owner tells Jay he has to do the onboarding and he's like, what the fuck? Like, this is not, I, I don't, I'm just as good as Jay, if not fitter, why do I have to do the onboarding? At which point, like, that is a logical conclusion to be very honest with you. Like, what is the point of this? Like, why did I have to do that? And, but if you stick to your guns long enough, nobody knows any different. It's just like, that's how we do it. Everybody does it. Whether you've been a CrossFit affiliate, you know, a uh, coach or a, a CrossFitter for five years, or if you're a spec ops guy or something like that, it doesn't matter. Everybody does it. It's not, it's not, there are, there, there are no exceptions for it anymore. So that's why we no longer, but we had to go through, we had to refine it. We had to build it. We had to hold our guns. We had to tell people, no, be like, listen, you're going to do that. And they're going to be like, I'm going to go to another affiliate. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to eat that one. But if I don't, then the revolving door stays unlocked. What, what do you think comes first, right? It's the chicken and the egg. The chicken. <laughs> do you think, <laughs> do you think it's 
there's discrepancy in how people are coming through or affiliate owners don't understand the value in what they're doing. The value one is first. And then the discrepancy is a result of the lack of understanding of the value. Right. So they're like, I'm supposed to do this onboarding thing. I don't quite undersure, understand why. I'm or not what, sure where, or how. Or it's just how, like I'm supposed to some I'm supposed to charge some people more money on the front end to show them stuff. And because and that's then, what people do. And then or not. Amount, or I just dump them right in the class. Right. But also that amount that they're charging doesn't necessarily equal anything. It's just some arbitrary number. Well, they're doing three sessions, so $150. Mm-hmm. Right. Not here's other value they're getting where we're giving them a nutrition plan or right. You know, we're going to sit down with them and discuss goal setting, or we're right. going to come up with a mobility routine for them, right. which all have other value just because it's not face to face doesn't mean they're not getting it. Right. And then all of a sudden someone box at that. Wait, it's $200. Why? And they're like, ah, you could skip it. <laughs> right. And then it becomes, I mean, like, that is the scenario. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. And then it becomes, okay, so now I'm allowing you to skip it. Like you said, you tell your buddy to skip that you didn't do it. Hey, all you have to do is say, I don't want to do it. And they let you go. And yeah. Then- tell me your friends with me. Like we're, you're good. Or, or you have, or you have the, this weird scenario, which I have seen this where members are negotiating price points on the behalf, on behalf of the gym, which yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? What no, is that? <laughs> that's like me being like, Hey, for an, there's a great steakhouse down the road. Uh, tell them you're going to pay 20 bucks for that filet. Yeah, because I went there and we're friends that you uh, you get free appetizers because it's just like, don't worry, because you're because you're gluten free or some shit like that. Well, <laughs> like- and then and then here's the deal, like all this stuff we're describing is not only true and laughable, it's not even the biggest issue with this. The biggest issue with it is these are also your shitty members. These are your members that never. OK, you're going to uh, look, get, hear me out. They they um, they're, they're they're the members that aren't bought in because they're they're bartering with you, if you will. You know, they're going back and forth trying to come up with a, a price that they're comfortable with, not your actual price. They don't do your onboarding. And we've we've said numerous times your onboarding isn't creating virtuosity in new people, but it is giving them an understanding of what you're doing, aka buy-in. And right. then B, or lastly, these are the same people now that it's like this cycle, right? It's like, okay, now they're gonna recommend people and it's you, you're going to, you can go back to like patient zero and figure out who started this. And I guess, spoiler alert, you it's are you. the patient. Yeah. You are patient zero, but you, you, know, are, you're, you you're are not, you are, are not, you're the, you're the first person infected with uh, COVID-19. Yeah. You, you were into Wuhan and what, whatnot, but <laughs> you know, now, but the, you know, you don't look at it as like, it's actually your fault. You're like blame. Oh, I gave Fern this discount. Now all of his buddies are well, cool. Why'd you give him that discount? Um, I don't necessarily think that they're your work, they're your shitty members. I, I think that they took what you gave them. Right. So I again I, I don't think it's fair to to cast blame on the member because what who wouldn't take that deal? Like who wouldn't negotiate down and then take a lower price point? Like why would you like what that would that is not logical. Like, I don't know anybody that would really do that. I would absolutely take the lower price point if I was just like, hey, uh, would you mind if I pay 50%? And you're like, absolutely. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I don't want to pay 100%. I'm more than willing to, but I don't necessarily want to. Um, so I, th- I think this is the gym owners, but this all goes back to real understanding what you do because a lot of the issues that you just talked about, they do become a problem in the gym, but it's not their fault. It's our fault for letting them skip the process. And it's like, well, you get what point. you Your get. Yeah. Are- right. You, you get what you tolerate. And when you let people skip the process or you let people create an offering that you don't offer so that to sell them that then you create these very weird inconsistencies and as much as you would like to think that they're not going to tell somebody they're definitely going to tell somebody that they're not paying because they're going to do exactly what I just told you but like, listen he'll probably give you a deal because I suckered him and then you could get a deal too and this is this is the kind of you know, the, the negative feedback loop where it's tough to get out of that. And the way you get out of that is I have to establish what it is that I do. And then I have to be willing to tell people no. And I'm fully aware that this is very difficult to do. If you are running, you know, a couple hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollar loss every month 
and you really would like to see that break even point. You will stay there forever though if you continue this cycle. Yeah, because you know, not only are you not bringing in as much as you should be, but I'm, retention is going to go down. You're going to lose a lot of those people long term, or you're the box owner that wakes up one day and you're like, man, I just don't like this place anymore. Well, you're letting in a bunch of people that you aren't your brand heroes. They're not the people you open this box for. And even if they are those people, you're, you're creating this behavior within them that allows them to question just about everything you do, because from day one, it's like, it's like having kids, right? If, if, you know, idle threats, right? Like, Oh, if you don't do this, you're going to, you're going to go to your room and then you never send them to the room. Right. They know they can get away with it. And then you're going to sell t-shirts and be like, Hey, t-shirts are usually only 20 bucks. I'll give you 20 bucks. Or, Hey, if I buy three bags of protein, can I get it cheaper? Or, you know, I have another friend that wants to come in. Can they come in for a month free to check it out? Like all of those things, as I'm saying them are things I truly heard. And I'm sure you've heard or have done. Sure, yeah, or done. Exactly. But it all starts from that first moment. And, and again, we love to use the four agreements. Be impeccable with your word, right? This is your, this is your word to you, to the business, to your members that are already there. And when you let people start violating that, this is when the culture thing breaks down. This is when the community thing doesn't work anymore because there is no value to your word at that point. Like if the, if, if the price is the price, then it's the price. And if it's not, then what you need to do is change the price, right? It, the, you know, the, 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 the old adage of like, Hey, what's the price on the website? And then we go pop the hood on this thing. And literally nobody in the gym pays that price. I'm like, mm-hmm. that is a breakdown in your word to yourself and to the rest of the community because everybody looks at it and they're like, Oh yeah, nobody actually pays that price. Like that is a significant problem. That is a cultural problem that you will have to really get sorted out. And it starts by setting the line in the sand, understanding that it should be value-based, not just arbitrarily made up. And then I have to deliver on that. And I have to be willing to hold the line. I have to be willing to say, no, no, the principle around why we designed it this way is this. And I'm not coming off of that because I know what the repercussions are of that because you might be living that right now. We're just like, hey, I, people don't stay, and uh, you know they get mad when they uh, when we cancel. So then I, I I fold when they cancel, and I don't charge them when they should get charged, and I let them out of the agreement or whatever it's going to be because X Y Z. And I'm not saying you shouldn't break the rules. My guidance to everybody is like, if you as a person are like, hey, the right thing to do here is to break the rules, then break the rules. They're your rules. But if you feel bullied or pressured into breaking the rules, then you should absolutely not break the rules. Well, and and a lot of what you're suggesting comes from having a strong understanding of what you're offering and putting systems, protocols, operations in place so you can fall back on. You can't just have this arbitrary number that you're onboarding costs. You should also have a laminated piece of paper that shows what's included in it. So whether it's you or a coach or even a member that's like, Hey, here's what it is. Like they're going to show their buddy, all of those things matter. And, you know, you and I, when we were joking about the whiteboard, one of the things we talked about is that's what's vital to your business is it's the stuff you don't enjoy doing. But if you do those things once and then continue to stay on top of them, it makes every other decision you have to make going forward easier, better, And it will create a stronger community because by doing those things, you're getting, you know, the people can be the same, right? There's the expression that we use a lot, change the people or change the people. And when we say that all immediately, most people think to the, well, I got to swap out. I've got to actually change who these people are. It doesn't have to be that way. You probably have really great people at your box, but because Mm -hmm. of some of the things, it's like your kids, like, my kid's an asshole at times as are yours Fern, right? Like, and it's not them. It's what you're allowing them to do. The great example. Well, it's kind of them. If we're talking about my kids, it's kind of, yeah. I mean, genetics, they have no choice, right? They're going to be assholes. I'm like, you're a little me, (laughs) but you know, for like the first two months, Madison was like dictating her sleep schedule. And we, you know, we're by ourselves here. We had no advice. And one day we were like, huh, maybe we should be putting her down at specific times. 
And it's like all of a sudden she was a much happier baby. And right. it's the same thing with your members. Like, here are the rules. You have to abide by them. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, OK. And it's a lot more fun for like people have real jobs and, and real lives outside of the box. We forget a lot of times when they want it's what job discipline equals freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. if, if they walk into the box and know like classes start on time, this is what I pay. I can't just, you know, be a turd and get in the way after class is over. I can hang out in the little lobby that says like, you don't have to work out to hang out, but I can't be in the way doing my own shit. All of a sudden they're happier because they know what the rules are. It's, it's when there aren't rules that they're like, what's allowed. Am I going to get in trouble? What should I tell people? We just had that conversation as a staff that we started pushing over because like, we do have people that want to do extra work and I, and I encourage that. And you just have to keep tabs on it. It's just like when the coaching staff gets a little lazy about, about, cleaning the gym or doing like it happens. Like it's one of these things that you will have to revisit once a quarterback. Hey guys, I definitely want you to bro sesh your life away or do extra stuff. But remember, you can't do it right there. Like I need you to go over here and do it because it really messes up the rest of the class and it impedes on other people's experience. And they're like, okay, cool. But we let the, we let the pendulum swing a little too far and people will take what you give them, not maliciously 50% of the time. They're not even aware that they're doing it. And then when you just let them do it, they're like, it's okay because I let them do it. So their assumption is correct, right? And you just have to communicate that. And there's like three major areas where this becomes problematic for gym owners, the onboarding holds cancellations, and then like the types of memberships that you sell. So I'll give a, I'll give a very specific example of creating things logically. So then that you can hold the line. So I had a cancellation come through a couple months ago. And it came through and I was like, that's weird. I don't like, I know for a fact, this person's not here. And long story short, go back to October of last year. Lady came in, she was great, right? Went through the onboarding, paid in full for six months. Got it. And then um, things got shut down for some military stuff. So paid in full for six months, put the membership on hold. So it didn't like the following month, because there were some restrictions about movement that people didn't want to violate. And they're like, okay, cool. Put it on hold. So put it on hold for three months. And then that three months expired membership kicks back in, uh, that, that runs its course. The, the membership runs its course. It's full course. So she got all the months available to her and then submitted a cancellation after the paid in full duration had expired, but hadn't been in, even though we have constant communication, constant reach outs, right? So it hasn't been in a while and wants a refund, okay? Now, I will tell you point blank, there are scenarios here where I have given people their money back because it's the right thing to do. And there's and always I, gonna be those examples, always, right? right? Like no. you said it earlier, I'm not saying don't discount it, don't make right. these changes, it's just, they should so be how, far and few in between. Right, however, I probably would have caved had I didn't have the structure and the whys and all of the logical points behind it so that I could authority, so I could feel good and authoritatively hold the line and say, you're not getting your money back. Okay. So there's like, I want, and so Cassidy was managing it and then it got a little, it got a little testy in the email at which, at which point I was like, he, he's like, I'm going to punt this over to you. So punts it over to me before I do something I regret. No, I just think that the that's that's where a little bit more my skill set, which is the professional, um, uh, but hard no. And so I went back and I went through and I was like, "Hey, listen, here's the deal." And I walked through the timeline where there was nothing lost. I want and I pulled all of the documentation. I pulled the waiver, which has all these things listed in it. Pulled the transparency sheet, which has all the things listed in it. And I pulled the hold and the cancellation forms that has everything listed. In it, and I provided all four pieces of documentation. Okay walk through the timeline. And then I was able to authoritatively say, and then she said, well, I chose not to come in because of these things. At which point I was like, oh, cool. That's your decision. We reached out to you. It's not like we've been absent. You get two emails from me every week and we've reached out to you. I was like, I have a minimum of 14 pieces of individual communication to you on this subject. You're not getting your money back. Why? Because it's not, you chose not to come in. Right. And it's not like we ghosted you and, and it was like, you know, like we were out of sight, out of mind. I'm like, we do far more communication with our member base than almost any gym. We don't pummel them with nonsense, but we communicate on a 
two time a week cycle. That's just via email. That's not via like weekly follow-ups. That's not via like just texting for gym closers in that six to eight months, like whatever. Like you got 20 to 25 pieces of communication from us, like at least three a month at that point. So having all of that in place, I don't mind holding the line there. But I not only don't mind it, I'm like authoritatively what I went back and I said, I'm having a hard time coming up with a reason why I would refund this. Right. Like I want to, I want to be the, if I wanted to, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly come up with an objective reason other than you just want your money back. And I'm like, that is not fair. Which by the way, I shouldn't say a nice person. That's not true. You're a business owner, which doesn't always align with being the nice person, right? Like you should be, but sometimes you have to make business, right? Fair is the right word. Fair. Right. And I want to be fair. And I made it the business decision because I saw this as not fair. I was like, I have upheld this policy for people that had way more uh, gray scenarios than this one. Like this one is black and white by literally every outline of the scenario. Like at no point was there a scenario here that that, that unfolded at which point I'm like, ah, I could kind of see where you're coming from here. I'm like, nope, it was black and white the whole time. And I have all this documentation was very clearly laid out. And I and I, like I said, I have done that. I'm like, hey, the right thing to do is give your money back here. So I'm going to give you your money back. This was not it. However, had I not done all of these things prior to, had I not logically thought through all these scenarios and put structure in place that they were kind of like my backstop on these scenarios so that I could point to these and be like, no, no, here's how it worked. Here's what we talked about. Here's the agreement that we made. Here was the scenario that wrote out. Here's the exact timeline by day. No, I'm not giving that back to you. Well, that is just unfortunate, right? It is what it is, but you chose not to come in. We reached out to you numerous times. We've talked, like we have conversed about this prior to this scenario and didn't hear anything back. And it, But that was one or five years ago, I would have felt pressured to give this person their money back. And I'm like, I'm not doing it. Like that's not happening. Well, and, and what people may be hearing is, well, Fern's a stickler or this and that. Yes, he can be. Because those things are done. You, you may have heard the words, you know, transparency, she and cancellation policy. First of all, all things that we include in affiliate you, right? So they're there for people to use. But those things that are there for people to use, most of them, either Fern, myself, created, or we stole them from someone smarter than us and implemented in our facility. I mean, I remember my first waiver was stolen from Pat Sherwood, where there was literally the, you know, asshole and Mercedes clause, which were, right. you know, we can kick you out if you're an asshole and you may be hit by your car in the parking lot. And you're I basically si- signing off on that. I signed that waiver in 2008. <laughs> right. And the point is, it's like, hey, you know, we can then go back and, and defend ourselves, which we've had to do numerous times when people, you know, um, dispute a credit card charge or, you know, mm-hmm. we've, we've had numerous clients of ours and affiliate you win those credit card disputes, which is really unheard of. It's very hard to do mm-hmm. unless you have those policies in place. And if you have those policies in place, when you have to present it, you're like, Nope, right here. It says 30 day cancellation. You didn't abide by that. Cool. Credit card charge sticks. Now you can still use those. And a lot of instances, the, that, a governing body will side with the, with the consumer. Okay. So you, you can absolutely still use them. Like there, there's not a hard line there where you'd be like, you're going to win all of those every single time. And all of the point of this is you again, do the right thing, right? Like do the right thing in that scenario. And, and you're like, what's the right thing? I'm like, you will know when the time is right to, to, to void the rule and say, Hey, listen, it, the right thing to do here, like all of these things are out of control. This is a weird anomaly. Um, I'm going to refund that money to you because that makes sense. And that is fair based on all the stuff that I know right now. However, as an affiliate owner, as a business owner, we want, I want you, we want you, you should feel good about holding the line on certain things. Like what is your offering? Making people go, making sure people go through onboarding, having policies and procedures in place that create structure about, you know, not letting the inmates run the asylum. Right? Like you're in charge and we want you to be in charge. And if you feel like you're not in charge of your business, these are the things that you need to unpack. Because if you're not in charge of the business and it doesn't run and there's not structure and there's not rules and there is not objective, transparent fairness 
in the design and structure of your business, the, you're probably not having the best hour of your day. Your members are probably not having the best hour of their day. And you're rapidly racing towards this scenario in which you are an affiliate owner who hates their affiliate and doesn't want to go there every day. That, that's what this really comes down to. Like we forget that by having these rules, it removes this stress. You know, when, hey. if you don't have these rules and you have a hundred members, you're going to have to deal with something in line with this once a week, you know, maybe not quite that often, but certainly a handful of times a month. Once a week would be fair. Once, if you were running right. a 97% That's... retention rate, and that means you'd get three cancel, you know, three cancellations a month at a hundred, right? So that's roughly one or call, we'll call it one every 10 days. Yeah. And, and not only cancellations, but holds right. or new people coming into the gym, et cetera. You're dealing with something along these lines every day, or I'm sorry, every week. And again, that's not fun. But if by doing these things, I know, okay, if, and when this does happen, I've got a plan and I've got, you know, and, and let's be honest, we're kind of protecting ourselves from it even happening because it's called the transparency sheet for a reason. You should be transparent with these new people as right. in, Hey, by the way, you know, I'm glad you're now a member of CrossFit Rife. Just a reminder, we have a 30 day cancellation policy. We allow you to do two holds a year for 14 right. days or whatever that looks like. Cool. Now, you know, and, and those new people, realistically, they don't remember that conversation. They do. If you it, do it right, I will tell you, you that. Sure. But even if you don't do it right, at least you have their signature on the page. Hey, uh, you signed this. Like, I can't help that. You know, I went and, and got a new phone at Verizon yesterday. And I said to the guy, I was like, you signed a 30 year contract. And I'm like, I, yeah, did? I was like, <laughs> I was like, did I just, <laughs> he was a young kid. And I was like, did I just sign up to be in a human centipede? And he was like <laughs> laughing. And I was like, I didn't read that agreement. Like, so, right. and he's like, no, 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 no South Park things happening. But that's the point. Like we all sign these things every day that now, if I go back to Verizon and in three months was like, I want out, they're gonna be like, oh, cool. You can get out. It's X, Y, and Z cost. Right. You sign right. this. Right. Oh, you didn't read it. That's uh, your fault. Right. And, and this is where understanding this process and building all of these things in place, because uh, newsflash, your members do not read the waiver. Anytime I catch somebody reading the waiver, I laugh out loud. I'm like, congratulations on being like one of the only people ever that has, that has read this waiver. Like they just don't, they sign it. They generally know what it says. And if that is your backup, that it just like that you signed the waiver, that's a shitty deal. You know, they didn't read it. So put other things in place so that you can start this relationship off on the right foot, which is making sure that there is a very clear understanding about what people are getting into, whether it's the type of memberships you offer, whether they have to do onboarding, whatever your holds and cancellations policies are, because really what you're looking for at the end of the day is this. When we do break up and we all break up eventually, I want an amicable departure. I don't want a fist fight on the way out the door. Because when that happens, that person is never coming back. And if you design rules and design fairness, when that person does leave for life circumstances or they move or whatever, and they leave on amicable terms because we were all clear on how this works and we created something that was revolving around fairness, you will see them back at some point. And this is how you start to really maximize things like retention. I might not have that person back for two years, but I'll get them back in two years. And, and, and fairness helps. And like you've said that, that we, I, we had a client the other day, she sent me the email back and forth she was having. And I said to her, I was like, look, I think, I think you should let this person go. And here's why. And it was for those exact reasons. It was like, look, they're going to come back. So do you want to collect on the $150 that they owe you or that they've already paid, you know, without refunding, or do you want this person to come back again and potentially be another long-term member? So it's, you know, you ideally never burn that bridge. Well, yeah, right. once in a while things happen, but the point is- I've done, that, you, I've done that with our clients, right? Where they're just like, hey, what should I do? I'm like, you're going to have to give that person their money back. Why? Yeah. Because that's not fair. Like they didn't agree to that. You changed it in route and didn't update them. Which goes back to like, cool, you're listening to this and you're like, man, I do need contracts or a cancellation policy or a, a hold policy. Well, A- your current members need to sign it. B, keep in mind until they're actually in that policy, you can, it's not 
it's not enforceable. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not enforceable. enforceable. Right. So, you know, if they've been paying uh, 150 bucks a month and you're saying, okay, mm-hmm. that's my new 12 month commitment rate because my new month to month rate is 170. Just because they're paying that doesn't mean they're in that 12 month commitment. In fact, you know, we have some clients that have lifetime members or have long term founding memberships, which is like cool at the time. Might have sounded like a great idea. In retrospect, we know that it wasn't, but it is what it is. You have to abide by it. You can now you can have a conversation with them. You can renegotiate. Right. Hey. I, you know, I know I gave you this lifetime membership that was five years ago. The business has changed. I was dumb. Uh, these two, these two people, Fern and Ackerman told me I was dumb and, and I need to talk to you about it. And you need to be willing to either accept that they say no, accept that they say yes, or potentially meet them in the middle. We've had people where it's like, Hey, you're, you paid a lifetime membership. I'm going to apply that for the time you've been here or whatever that may look like. But Unless they say, okay, you, you made your bed, sleep in it, but learn your lesson and never do that again. It's all about communication. Communicate the expectation on the front end. You'll be much happier because you'll have rules in place. Everybody will understand the structure. At the end of the day, that is what creates the best hour of their day. That's what keeps people around. That's what creates the lines of communication open. And that's where everybody has the understanding about this is how things work. And you, you can forfeit almost... M- almost all of the headaches involved with this and you breaking your own word to yourself because you didn't create the structure that you should have on the first end. And if that's something you need help with, just set up a call with us. We'll talk to you. We'll help you walk through some of these scenarios. Like we're absolutely do this. Like this is what we do all damn day, but you got to fix that. Even on Saturdays. Even on Saturdays. Saturdays. And, but if you don't, again, you're going to get stuck in that scenario that just feels like you're getting tumbled around in the dryer over and over and over. Same shitty scenario over again, yet to fix it. And that, my friends, is the definition of insanity. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at best hour of their day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.